What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next question, dealing with circles. This one's gonna be pretty tricky as a heads up. It's also gonna be kind of tough to explain, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it as smoothly as possible. So we're given this diagram here, and given that the equation of the smaller circle, which is this one over here, in the diagram below is x squared plus y squared is equal to nine, we have to find the equation of the larger circle, which is this circle over here. So notice that we actually have three shapes that we're dealing with. We have this uh, smaller circle, we have the larger circle, and then we have this shape in between. And actually that shape is a square. And I'm gonna explain why it's a square in a sec. So we've got a smaller circle, a square, and then a larger circle. Now the reason why this is a square, how you could tell from this diagram is because notice that the smaller circle is touching the square here, 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 and over here. And notice that it's touching the square at the circle's most outside point. So notice at the highest point of the circle, it's touching the square at the lowest point at the left most point, and then at the right most point of the circle. So it's not touching the square like here or here, it's at the extremes, quote unquote, of the smaller circle. The highest, the lowest, the most left, the most right. And so, because this is a circle, we're told, that smaller shape, then because this is the highest point, this is the lowest point of the circle, we know that the distance between those two points is going to be the diameter, right? And it's gonna go through the center of the circle. And then the distance between the leftmost point of the circle and the rightmost point, well, it's also gonna go through the center of the circle, and then those endpoints are gonna be the diameter. And so the diameter, it's the same everywhere in the circle. And so if we relate it to the, uh, to the shape on the outside now, notice that from here to here, that is like the width of that shape. And then from here to here, that's like the length of that shape. And because it's the diameter of the smaller circle, the diameter of the smaller circle, that means that the length and the width of that shape is the same, and so it's a square right? Length, width is the same. So that's how you could tell that it's going to be a square and that's going to be important information. Another thing I want to mention is because this is the center of the circle here, because this is the halfway point of the length and the width of the square, this is also going to be the um, midpoint of the square, right? It's gonna be the midpoint of the square. It's also going to be the midpoint of the larger circle. So this midpoint is the same. It's the center for all three uh, shapes. So that's the first thing I wanna mention about the diagram. So now let's get into the technical details. So notice that for the smaller circle, we're told that its equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to nine. And so from here we could tell that the smaller circle has a radius of three because we know in general, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so we know that for the smaller circle, the r squared is going to equal 9, square root both sides. It means the radius of the um, smaller circle is going to be 3. So this here is going to be 3, this here is going to be 3, this is going to be 3, this is going to be 3, right there. Okay, so it also means that the diameter of the circle is 6, the diameter of the circle is six, so it means that the length and the width of the square is six as well. Okay, another thing that we can get from this diagram is if this is three, this is three, it also means that this length over here is three, 
for the square. This length over here is three. This length over here is three. This is three, right? All of these smaller lengths of the square are three. That's gonna be important. So knowing all of that right there, the question is how can we find the equation of the larger circle on the, the circle on the outside there? And really all we need for the larger circle is its radius because once we have the radius of any circle, well, we could just plug in the radius there and then we have the equation of that particular circle. So we need the radius of the larger circle, then we could just plug it in there. We're done the question. The question is how can we get the radius of the larger circle from all of this? Well, just to kind of draw maybe like a preliminary diagram, let me get rid of the smaller circle in this diagram and then just draw the square and the larger circle. So as we mentioned, we have the center over here, which is the center of the square. It's also the center of the larger circle. Everything is symmetrical. And notice that the square, the vertices of the square, they actually lie on the larger circle. Okay, the vertices of the square lie on the larger circle. There are points on the larger circle. And we have the center of the larger circle, and we know just in general, any circle, if we have the center, any point on the circle, any point that we draw, the distance from the midpoint to any point or the center of the circle to any point on the circle, that's always going to be the radius, right? So this here is the radius, or this here is the radius, this here is the radius, that there is the radius. All four of those lines are the radius of the larger circle. Okay, so now coming back to here, Let's just work with one of these uh, radii. So if we work with this one over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna erase this smaller circle just so there's not too many lines going on here so we can see what's going on. That there is the radius of the larger circle. Let me actually shade it in right there. That there is the radius of the larger circle. And notice that that right there, if you look at it more closely, it's actually, we can make that the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we can just look at this part over here. Notice that that's a right triangle. We could also look at this over here and we could have picked any radii to work with for the larger circle. I picked it this radius over here. So we have a right triangle and we have, it's actually an isosceles right triangle because we have the length of three over here as we mentioned before and the length of three over here. And so really what we need if we erase everything else just to kinda have less going on here so you could see it a little more clearly. So I didn't erase those threes that we brought in before, but we got this, we got this, and now we just have to solve for that radius right there. So we have a right triangle and we have those two sides there. How can we solve for the radius? Pythagoras theorem, right? We know that any right triangle, just as a review. So if we have a right triangle, this is A, this is B, this is C, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And so taking this, relating it to this, the three is A, the B is A, um, sorry, the A is three, the B is three, and then the C is the radius that we are solving for.
So that's just going to be r squared. And so from here, 3 squared is 9, 3 squared is 9, r squared, this is going to be 18. And actually, we already have an expression for r squared, and that's what we have to plug in there. And so the final equation is just x squared plus y squared is equal to 18. You can find the radius if you want. The radius would be root 18, right? But then when you plug in that radius here, okay, if you want to take it an extra step, you'd end up with that. Root 18 squared would just be 18. But because we already had r squared here directly, we could just plug in that 18 for the entire right side. And so that is the final answer. That ends up being the equation of the larger circle. All right, so a couple of steps. Um, tried to explain it the best I could. So you just got to recognize that from the smaller circle, you're going to have a square. Right? And then from that square, you could get those little lengths, which are going to be these threes were the radius of the smaller circle. So you can kind of erase the smaller circle, deal with the square, and then figure out that this over here is the radius of the larger circle from the center to one of the vertices of the square. That's the radius of the larger circle. And then you have this right angled triangle that you could work with. And then you could use Pythagoras theorem to solve for that radius or solve for that R squared. And then you could just plug that in. And then you have the equation of the larger circle.